Hi there, Father John again. And yesterday, or whichever day, you heard the first of uh, a series of Easter talks, reflections, that I'm doing on Matthew 28, that day when the women came to the tomb to look at Jesus, or to mourn Jesus, and found that the an angel was there, and the stone was rolled away, and they got a message. Well, as we continue, I'd like to change from that very first line that I used, which was, do not be afraid, which is what the angel said to them when he first, when they first encountered him, the angel said, do not be afraid. He's trying to reassure those people that everything's okay. And Matthew's gospel reports that the women want to keep a vigil. They want to wait by Jesus' tomb. They want to mourn him. They haven't had a chance yet because he died on Friday and Saturday was the Sabbath, so they couldn't walk anywhere. Well, now it's early Monday morning on the day after his death, the Sunday, right, sorry, Monday, the first week after he's died. Suddenly, the earth rocks and reels under their feet and an angel comes down from heaven comes right up to where they are standing, and he rolls back the stone, and he sits on it, and lightning is blazing around him. His robes, robes are shimmering, sh shimmering white. Wow. The guards at the tomb are scared to death. They are so frightened that they fall down, paralyzed. Can you imagine? Put yourself there, and even though we have already heard the angel say, don't be afraid, it's pretty freaky. I can't imagine. I can't imagine what it would be like to be visited by an angel. An angel who arrives in the middle of an earthquake, who rolls a giant boulder away from the tomb door, and then he sits on it to deliver a message. And the women are also freaked out because when he rolls the stone away, his body's gone. Was it stolen? Huh. Who took it? The Sanhedrin, those paranoid Jewish rulers who were probably afraid that Jesus' grave might turn into some sort of monument? If that happened, they'd be blamed for his martyrdom. Or maybe it could have been those Romans who would have been happy to get rid of this troublemaker. They'd like all memory of him to disappear. Well, I'm sure the women must be shaking. Regardless, the angel says, I know you're looking for Jesus, the one who they nailed to the cross. He's not here. He's not here. That's just too simple. These women are suffering a kind of trauma. They're grieving deeply. They've come here to mourn. And now, not only has their plan been rocked, but they've got to deal with the idea that they'll never be able to remember him at a grave. For people who are grieving anywhere, that's got to be upsetting. So many people want to mourn. They want to be close to their beloved friend, their mentor, in his case, their Messiah. But he's not here. That's impossible for them to take in. The angel, or the angels, depending on whose report you read, are saying that for us too, saying it on another level, maybe the emphasis should be, he's not here, like he's gone. He's gone somewhere else, maybe. Mercifully, it's not long before they all discover that he is not dead. He is risen from death and is alive like he promised and predicted several times. And I often find myself wondering if Jesus was standing right over there, and I had some question, what would he say? What would Jesus say? And it's not easy to think of what he would say. It's what he would say if he just happened over and looked at me. What would that be? I'd look up and I'd think I'd want to smile, and want to smile. That's Jesus. He's alive. And for us, perhaps not physically, but certainly 
Absolutely, Jesus is alive in spirit. So pray that. Pray that when you're shaking, or maybe when things haven't gone the way you'd like, when you're disappointed, when you're hurt or afraid. Don't think God's far away. Don't think God's dead. Trust, like these women do, when the angel's message finally sinks in. Trust that God's Spirit, Jesus' Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is always here, outside of the grave, and anxious to listen. Amen. Hallelujah.